Roswell Flight Test Crew here at AUVSI Exponential 2021 in Hotlanta, Georgia. And I'm here with Dr. Troy Messler at the Skyfront booth. How are you doing, Troy? Doing all right. Thank you. Good, good. So you guys have been making a lot of news lately. What's it all about? Well, um, well, my name is Troy Messler. I'm the CEO of Skyfront. And Skyfront is a manufacturer of the Perimeter 8 UAS. And the Perimeter 8 UAS is a hybrid electric multirotor that flies for a really long time. As you mentioned, like recently, we actually set the world record for flight time. We flew it for 13 hours and over 205 miles. That's never been done before. We took off before sunrise and we touched down after sunset and we captured the entire sun up, the sun down on camera on board the UAV. Now, with that kind of flight endurance, uh, what's your power system? I take it it's not batteries. It's not batteries, no, we're, we're hybrid electric. So we convert gasoline into electricity in flight. Um, and the idea behind this is we wanted to take advantage of the awesome multi-rotor technology that's been developed over the last 15 to 20 years, the ESCs, the motors, the propellers. We didn't want a direct drive system like a helicopter, for example. Um, but we also wanted the extended range and the extended endurance that batteries did not provide because of limited battery capacity. Um, so gasoline, super high energy density, we convert it to electricity in a very efficient way. Um, and we extract that energy and we, we deliver that to the propellers and the motors. And that's how we get our flight times. Fantastic. Now, I've seen other gas-powered drones before, but and frankly, they get good flight times, two hours, three hours, but not 13 hours. What's the, what's the special sauce there? How are you guys wringing so much more out of it? You know, to answer that question would take a long time. Um, but, you know, in general, it's really just about we've made a ton of improvements. So, uh, we, we manufacture the power source, for example. We manufacture the airframe. We manufacture the engine control unit. Um, and because we own the entire technology stack, we can make improvements, 1% to 2% improvements, everywhere across the board, right? And those things add up over time. And so, um, you know, at the end of the day, what we get is a 20%, 30% of improvement over our competitors in terms of flight time and payload capacity. I mean, it's an impressive achievement, and all the more so because, you, as you say, you're doing it in these little tiny increments. And finally, with this great technology, what um, what applications are you seeing this drone filling? What missions? Um, well, it's a, it's a generic platform. It can be used for a lot of different things because it's very versatile, right? Um, it's, a, it's basically like a heavy lift truck, um, and it can carry a lot of payload up to 17 pounds for about an hour. Um, so it's ideal for carrying heavy payloads like uh, LIDARs, uh, like the, the Vux LiDAR, bathmetric LiDARs from Astrolite, for example, it can carry those with ease uh, for sometimes uh, multiple hours. Um, so we're seeing a lot of um, attraction in the land surveying space, uh, people who want to create 3D models of the ground using LiDARs. Uh, we also do a lot of surveillance um, in, in other countries, um, and uh, we have a defense side of our business as well. Interesting. Now, I just have to ask because I've done some work with multi-rotors in the surveillance mode. Every gas power multi-rotor I've ever been around makes a hell of a racket when it's flying. Is that, does, does surveillance work in that context? Or people wonder why there's flying lawnmowers following them around? Well, I, we've actually spent a fair amount of time uh, muffling the vehicle and reducing sound and understanding its sound signature so that the operator knows when it can and cannot be heard. You know, during our training sessions, we advise the pilot on how to fly the thing so that they can evade detection um, using things like cloud cover or, um, you know, standoff distance. So we have about a, a, a perception or a standoff distance of about one kilometer. That's when you can start to hear the vehicle. It's very faint. Um, and so we advise, you know, our pilots to say, stay off at one kilometer. And then because our platform can carry a lot of weight, we can carry all the cameras that can zoom in to, you know, and, and actually image things from one kilometer away. So it actually works out quite well for surveillance as a surveillance tool. Well, that is impressive. And the whole approach is impressive. And it sounds like you guys are really leading the way in terms of, you know, making this lean and getting the most you can out of it. So thanks for sharing it with us. Really appreciate it, Troy. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. All right. And from Exponential 2021 in Hotlanta, Georgia, this is the Roswell Flight Test Crew signing off. Thanks again.